Hey, welcome to Lifestyle Strength. My name is Lucas, joined by... Ariel. How's it going, guys? Hope you're doing well. Today, we want to talk about negative emotions because they're a very real feeling that most of us are feeling way more often than we probably should. And unfortunately, in today's environment with social media and being able to see happiness or I'm, I'm doing air quotes as I say happiness all the time I feel like and through my own experience have been confused as to why I feel these negative emotions like sadness anger dare I say resentment mm -hmm. towards things and not understood how to handle them as a young man you know growing up in late teens early 20s and why everybody else seemed happy all the time. And logically, I can recognize that that's not really the case. It's not reality. But the reality is, is that you're still feeling these negative emotions. Mm -hmm. And in my experience, for me personally, the best way to handle those emotions is to find an outlet that allows you to express them in a healthy way. Yeah. And... I think you know where I'm going with this. Mm. For me, shocker, <laughs> it was fitness, right? It was lifting weights specifically. Yeah. Dealing with some deep-rooted resentment that I won't go too far into why it came about, mm -hmm. but I will say it was it was personal involved in uh, being raised as a as a young man, and, you know, people that are close to you. You don't recognize as it's happening, what's going on. But you, later growing up, you you realize that, oh, I was angry then. I yeah. was resentful towards a lot of people then. And finding fitness, finding a way to, to move and to feel that, I don't wanna say pain, but that uncomfortability that is associated negative emotions like right. anger and resentment and sadness allowing myself to feel that I think was the permission I needed to be able to overcome it and I think that's where a lot of us are messing up yeah absolutely I think it's uh it, it can be easy to sit in those negative emotions especially when if you have them enough um, even if you don't understand them they become familiar to you um, and you know check out our other podcasts where we talk about pain um, and discomfort and what that looks like. But realistically here with emotions, you know, if you're not utilizing that to fuel you in a positive direction, you know, then you're in, you're going to end up sitting in it. Right. Um, and that's not what we want for you. I know that I personally have had experiences where I go, oh man, I'm, I'm sitting in this, mm -hmm. you know, not only am I sitting in this, but how much of what we do to ourselves is because we feel like we lack control. Because when we when we fuel our negative emotions for towards a positive outcome for ourselves, we're really taking back control of those emotions. Um, and in no way am I saying that you shouldn't be able to feel the emotions you feel. In fact, definitely feel the emotions you feel. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's should. that's normal. That's natural. Um, but what I am saying is. Uh, be able to find it within yourself here to take back some self-control and fuel that negative emotion for a positive outcome. I know I teach clients a lot about, uh, you know, stressors. We've got good and bad stressors, right? And then we also have highs and low stressors. So we could have bad highs and then we can have bad lows and then good highs and good lows. And really what I mean by that is if we have stress, we might have a high stress that is our family or our work. Um, well, you can't exactly get rid of that, right? Right. And you might start building some negative emotion and resentment towards that. Um, you also might have like low bad stressors. Uh, like maybe your routine isn't really efficient in this phase of life for you right now. Um, and that is kind of producing some low-level bad that stress. chronic low-grade stress. Yes. And so, you know, what I recommend people do is uh, we, we create some form of balance here and we say, okay, 
well, you know, I can't get rid of my family or my kids or my job. I know right now it's a high stress for me and it's not a good stress. And I know I'm, I'm building some negative emotions towards it. Well, how about I replace that with a high good stress? And that high good stress is physical activity. Um, and then, of course, you're going to have um, some low good uh, stress, which is going to be like, Maybe crocheting. I don't know. Maybe it's learning a, a new book. skill, being willing yes. to not be good at something that allows you the opportunity to either be productive or to find a sense of value. Yes, in it. it changes that emotion, right? So not only are we creating balance within those stressors, um, but we're also redirecting and taking some level of control back with our emotions. Um, so again, going back to this, guys, I'm not saying that negative emotions are bad. We're saying, hey, listen, they are going to happen. And we want to um, encourage you to embrace the opportunity to take back that control and be able to use that as fuel for positivity in your life. Absolutely. They're very real. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you recognize that they're real, you really have two options. A, a mentor of mine once said, when you have... A challenge in front of you, uh, something that's attacking you that you would consider detrimental to your success. So I would imagine like I'm a knight, right? Knight in, in armor. <laughs> okay. And I have this armor around me, which is our, our defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. So however you are currently dealing with your negative emotions, maybe it's eating sugary foods or, you know, just of trying to avoid the problem. You have this armor around you that can protect you for a short period of time. The problem is, is when those negative emotions in this context, the attacker is coming at you, you can defend it for a period of time, but that attacker is always going to keep coming back because you're keeping it right in front of you. Mm -hmm. You're trying to battle it, and eventually a kink in the armor is going to happen because... Armor is not perfect. So if your armor is eating sugary foods to feel better, which we can all agree is not the best of armors, eventually you're going to wake up and realize that, oh, I'm, it's really not armor. I've been getting stabbed by this negative emotion constantly, and now I'm 50 pounds overweight, yeah. and I feel like shit. There's consequences. You know, there's consequences yeah. to that. But it's not about creating more armor around us, I think, in this analogy. I think it's about understanding how to deal with the attacker mm -hmm. in a better way. Yeah. And as my mentor put it, you have to yield. You have to yield to that attack, to your attacker. You have to be willing to pull it to your side, to own it, and to, instead of combating it, like mm -hmm. hold hands with it. Mm -hmm. Be willing to understand it and know everything you can about it. And once you do that, now you can move forward and it can no longer attack you because it's a part of you and our negative emotions are a part of us. Mm -hmm. And once you embrace that idea and instead of trying to battle against them, you move that energy into something that can help you. Like you said, learning a new skill, exercising. There's so much out there you can do that is not falling into the trap of trying to defend yourself. Right, absolutely. So really what you're saying is that self-reflection that even makes us question, like, why did I even have that negative emotion to begin with? Yeah, I think and, that's a good starting place. Really. Yeah. Understanding that, okay, I had this emotion. Why did it take place? And then once you understand why, now you can move forward and what you're going to do about it. it. It's not like you'll solve the problem and you'll never have a negative emotion again. Right. But... If your initial reaction to a negative emotion is going for a walk, you're going to not only feel better, but you're going to make it so much further in learning who you are mm -hmm. as a res as that is the result of it, rather than, oh, negative emotion, just go towards immediate comfort. Right. What feels, right. What feels best right now. And you're not going to be perfect. I'm not perfect. It's not like every time... I get angry. I'm just like, oh, got to go to the gym, you know, work out these emotions, you know? Right. It's, that's it's not practical. Right. Right. But what is practical is being able to take a step back, look at yourself and realize, okay, I'm falling into these pitfalls. 
these bad habits exist because I'm in this world of negative emotion right now. I need to figure out how to deal with this a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. And then you start taking baby steps into maybe start walking. Right. Maybe you start a new skill. Very easy. And then before you know it, you've figured out something that you're interested in or right. you figured out something that makes you feel really good and you could start building habits and a better lifestyle around that thing. Well, I think it's important to note, like, when you do self-reflection and you're trying to determine where these negative emotions are coming from or why you're having them to begin with, in the fact that you're not going to immediately resolve that, we're saying in the meantime, the irony is coping can bo both be negative or positive, and you get to decide. So right. if, while you're doing self-reflecting and you go, you know what, I'm starting to learn why I have this negative emotion and I, I'm learning you know, what I need to do to resolve that. In the meantime, how can I use that negative emotion to fuel positivity? And how can I create a positive coping through this experience, right? Right. So, you know, it's not the end-all be-all. The end-all be-all is like, okay, how do I personally do some self-reflecting to resolve these emotions? But in the meantime, we want to be able to encourage y'all to implement things uh, that create positive coping. And like I said, um, you know, take some self-control back. It's very empowering um, when you are able to do that because in those moments where you have these negative emotions and you don't know where they're coming from or you're discovering where they come, they're coming from, you're still going, I feel a bit out of control, right? I feel like I don't have control of the situation. And even if I don't want to have that negative emotion, I still do. And so it's like, okay, how can we actually apply something that's useful through this process right. um, to empower you because lifestyle strength is about that empowerment and that balance here. Absolutely. We as humans think we are above a lot of things. Mm. And if you've ever heard of Pavlov's dogs, mm -hmm. famous experiment where he rings a bell, he feeds the dogs and they associate the ringing of the bell with getting fed, which is like the best thing you can do to a dog. Yeah. Maybe other than like a belly rub, right? <laughs> right? So they would start to salivate. So they're having a reaction to two stimuluses that are paired, stimuli mm -hmm. that are paired together. Right. And we're the same. Yeah. We're, we're exactly the same. And it's a really, really good strategy, empowering, like you said, to be able to recognize, okay, this negative thing is happening happening a lot in my life. And it's, or rather, this thing is happening a lot in my life and I'm having a negative emotions associated with it. So rather than just allowing those negative uh, emotions to be associated with whatever the stressor is in your life or whatever happened that is probably chronic, probably recurring, right? right? Then let's pair that negative emotion with something that is positive. And what you do is you create a positive feedback loop so yes. that when that thing occurs, when you have that negative emotion, now you're doing something that benefits you and it makes you feel good. It makes you feel better. It, dare I say, helps you in other things depending on what it is you've chose to do, yeah, right? It, it either makes you better at a skill, it uh, makes you healthier if you're choosing to uh, work out, if mm -hmm. you're choosing to strength train it literally makes you stronger as a human being. So now rather than sitting in it yeah. and allowing that thing that happened to affect you negatively, you're pairing it with that positive thing and that's allowing you to cope and move forward. So it's a double whammy on the win. Yeah, absolutely. Which on that note, guys. We're going to end it right here. Yeah. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.